Hi everyone, this is Joan, and it is wonderful to talk with all of you. Well, you're looking at a picture of Cynthia Dolores Tucker. Now, I was directed to her by The Cure. The Cure left a comment on the video I made about Tina Knowles Lawson. And she was expressing that Miss Tucker here had filed a lawsuit against Tupac Shakur. And I thought, wow, that wasn't that long ago. I should remember that. But I had no knowledge of her that I could remember. And uh, definitely did not remember any kind of a lawsuit. And admittedly, as I've stated before, some things I just simply don't pay much attention to. It's not just me. It's everybody. It's so many things going on in the world. You have to be somewhat selective. So, you know, that's why it's nice to talk to other people so you can find out, oh, wow. That's something I should know about. Let me look into it. So anyway, uh, let me read this short amount of information from Wikipedia. Now, you know I love Wikipedia. Even if you don't like Wikipedia, it at least gives you a place to start. You know, it's, a, uh, it's just the beginning. So let's look at it. Okay. What I wanted to show. Okay, I wanted to make sure that I included her age, not her age, but um, her date of birth, because I do believe that the time that the Heavenly Father has you come into this earth is telling a lot about you. So she was born October 4th, which makes her a Libra, which automatically right there says something about the legal, legal system. I can't quite figure that one out, how... Some of the most charming people in the world are also very much into um, law, the court of law and such. But in any case, she was a Libra. Now, Cynthia Dolores Tucker, nay, Nottage, October 4, 1927 through October 12, 2005, was an American politician and civil rights activist. She had a long history of involvement in the American civil rights movement. From the 1990s onward, she engaged in a campaign against gangster rap music. Okay, I'm going to skip all this and see what she had to say about gangster rap. Tucker dedicated much of the last few years of her life to condemning sexually explicit lyrics in rap and hip hop, I'm sorry, in rap and hip hop tracks citing a concern that the lyrics were misogynistic and threatened the moral foundation of the african-american community so she took pride in her community that's i think that's a beautiful thing called narrow-minded by some rappers who often mentioned her in their lyrics tucker picketed stores that sold rap music and bought stock in sony time warner and other companies in order to protest hip-hop at their shareholders meetings I think that is so cool. <laughs> I mean, she bought in just so she could go and and uh, have her voice heard at their meetings. Okay. She also fought against the NAACP's decision to nominate late rapper Tupac Shakur for one of its Image Awards and filed a $10 million lawsuit against his estates for comments that the rapper made in his song, How Do You Want It, on the album, all Eyes on Me, in which Tucock rapped, see Dolores Tucker use a, you know, M effort, instead of trying to help a N-word, you destroy a brother. Now, you know, Tupac was extremely popular, and words have, have power, especially if you have a lot of popularity behind it. So, I think that this did help popular popularize the already there notion that men are just more important that you know men can say whatever especially black men and black women they can say whatever they want to about you and it has no it is your definition if they say you're this then that is what you are especially if it's something negative so let me continue in her lawsuit, Tucker claimed that comments in this song and on the track Wonder Why They Call You B from the same album inflicted emotional distress, were slanderous, and invaded her privacy. This case was eventually dismissed. 
Now, when I heard that, it immediately made me think of Cardi B. And to me, the message is, anybody can say whatever they want to about black women. It doesn't matter. But black women cannot fight back. I mean, you can fight back, but you probably won't win. At least uh, back then. And if there have been cases where black women have stood up and said, I don't think so. Well, uh, and won. You know, please let me know. Now, I had left a, uh, based upon this information that the cure left about this woman, or the reference she made to the woman which made me look up the information, I left a comment, and I can't remember whose video I left the comment on. I think it was Nyla's Vibes or something. But anyway, I left the comment that I think that maybe black women should start a class action suit against rappers all the rappers who have said negative things especially about black women and uh the record labels so i don't know if that is something anybody would be interested in i also don't know that much about the law but you know it just sounds like something to consider because the things that happen like i said words have power and for over 20 years, I think black women have heard so many negative things about ourselves. And I do think that that has encouraged the homicide rate. That we're seeing that black women are being killed, murdered, more than pretty much anybody else in this country. And at the same time, we are also the ones who are most denigrated in music. Music hits a person's unconscious. That is, that they, even if they think they're not listening to the lyrics, if they listen to that song long enough, even if they don't even like the song, they'll find themselves singing it or humming it. And that is definitely affecting the it, people individually. And when enough people hear it, it's affecting the whole culture. And I think the black culture had some issues even before rap music, but I think rap music just, it's kind of like we were already teetering over near a cliff and that music came and just pushed it over a little bit. Uh, and the thing is, a lot of black women defended this music. I, I, I mean, I was never into rap too much because by the time rap became popular, I was into being married and taking care of children so that is part of the reason why this i don't even really remember this and i did know about tupac that's one that you know he was so popular i definitely knew about him but or heard his his music but a lot of it now i was totally oblivious i was too busy trying to avoid my ex-husband's insanity but anyway let me continue other rappers have taken similar stances in his song, Church for Thugs, the game raps, I've got more hatred in my soul than Tupac had for Dolores Tucker. Jay-Z chimes in as well with the lines, I don't care if you're C. Dolores Tucker or you're Bill O'Reilly, you're only ri riling me up from the Black Album's thread. Little Kim also referenced her in a leftover track called entitled Rocking It from her second studio album, Kim raps, see Dolores T, screw her, I never knew her. After Tucker dubbed her music as, her music as gangster porno rap and filth. Much of KRS One and Channel Live's Free Mumia is a direct criticism of what the MCC as Tucker's misplaced energy. Little Wayne also referenced her a couple of times once on his leftover song, Million Dollar Baby, rapping can't be blamed, I'm sorry, Mr. Loris, and more recently on his Carter Four album song, Mega Man, rapping, The Heater, I'm a Tucker, Tucker, like Dolores. Tucker later went on to serve on the advisory board of the Parents Television Council until her death in 2005. Hmm. Eminem referenced her in the song, Rap Game, by D12, rapping, Tell that C. Dolores Tucker S to suck a D. Okay, so this woman picked up a lot of abuse. She did. 
And uh, the thing is, most people like me will have no real idea who in the world she was or how hard she tried to fight something she saw as a threat to the black community. The problem is, when you see a threat and you try to tell people this is dangerous, if it is also pleasant or pleasurable, they will turn on you. That is also a problem with the black community. And a problem I think that I'm having, I feel that I'm having, you know, also in trying to tell people, hey, the Bible doesn't hate you, black woman. The Bible does not tell you to lay down and, and let this man walk all over you. I mean, I can totally understand women who believe that because, like I said, when I was in the Kingdom Hall, I was being told that if you leave this man, you will go to hell until someone, a Leo, pointed out, you're already in hell. <laughs> so, in any case, I want to make sure I also read about her accolades because a lot of younger women, like I said, I'm a baby boomer, but a lot of younger women think that their mothers and their grandmothers were just downright stupid and that they were just saying, hey, man, just do whatever you want with me. And that is not the case. As you can read here, this woman, who I believe was born in the 1920s, she she put her money where her mouth was. She went and bought shares just so she could tell these people what she thought of them. So this is not a matter of women in other generations were stupid. You can only use what you have. And the thing about history is that it is his story. So there are a lot of women who did a lot of things that a lot of us don't know about. And I feel that that is the same biblically. There were a lot of women doing a lot of things biblically that has been ignored. So let me continue on with her accolades. Selected as one of 25 of the world's most intriguing people by People Magazine, Tucker was also selected as a People Magazine 1996 yearbook honoree and was featured in the inaugural issue of John F. Kennedy Jr.'s George Magazine for her crusade against gangster rap. In addition, she has been acknowledged for her deep concern for children by First Lady Hillary Clinton in the book It Takes a Village, the National Women's Political Caucus in Red Book also named her as the woman best qualified to be ambassador to the United Nations. You know what you have to notice about this is it's a People Magazine, John F. Kennedy, George Magazine. These are all white people giving her accolades and that is another sad reality of the black race. But anyway, let me continue. For five consecutive years, from 1972 through 1977, she was listed as among Ebony Magazine's 100 Most Influential Black Americans. And that's a shame. I mean, she was, for five years, listed as most influential, and yet, I don't even remember who in the world she was. During that period, she was listed as Ladies Home Journal nominee for Woman of the Year in both 1975 and 1976. She was recognized by Ebony as one of the 100 most influential black organization leaders in the country in 2001 and 2002. Tucker was also a prominent member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. On April 25, 2006, a state historical marker honoring Tucker was unveiled was unveiled by Bill Tucker and Governor Ed Rendell in a ceremony at the State Museum of Pennsylvania in Harrisburg. In addition, it was announced that the North Building, which is adjacent to the State Capitol Building, was to be renamed the Secretary C. Dolores Tucker Building. The state marker, which was commissioned by the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission, was installed outside the entrance to the building. The marker reads, C. Dolores Tucker, 1927 to 2005, civil rights activist, civil rights leader and activist for women. She was the first African-American Secretary of State in the nation, championed the PA Pennsylvania Equal Rights Amendment, 
and policies on affirmative action voter registration by mail and lowering the voter age to 18. Spearheaded the creation of the Commission on the Status of Women and led a successful crusade critical to the music industry and lyrics, demeaning to women, African Americans, and children. Okay, so I, I see here that she was recognized by blacks from Ebony Magazine. She was uh, one of the 100 most influential black Americans. So also, she was a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha. And you know what? I've noticed if you look up almost any black woman who has accomplished something, she's usually a member of a sorority. So the thing is about her that, like I said, it's like my mother said years ago when I was a little girl. She said, this generation thinks that they discovered sex. And I remembered that because every generation comes and forgets that the generation before them had a brain. So I just want to point out that, like I was saying, your mothers and your grandmothers were not just laying down saying, hey, walk all over me. They were fighting too, just the same way you're fighting. But like I said, it is called history for a reason. And it is the same with the, it's the same with the Bible. That there were women there who were doing things. It's just that you can sit in the churches and kingdom halls and you just won't hear very much about them or if you do hear about them it'll be downplayed so i'm happy to share this information on miss tucker and what she did and uh even for all that if i walk up to you and i say tupac you'll know who i'm talking about but if i say see dolores tucker you'll be like who that you know maybe you know presumably i know i would have been like uh not quite sure who that is. So I hope that this has offered some enlightenment in this very dim world that we're living in right now. And, you know, perhaps giving you some reason to love yourself a little bit more, black woman, and to appreciate yourself, your mom, your grandma, and all the generations that came before you because all of them were actually trying the best they could with the information they had at that particular time. So if you have any questions or concerns, I appreciate comments. I really do. I appreciate all of you. I think that, you know, like I've heard other people say, I think I have the best audience in the world. Well, I feel that way about you. You listen to me and I appreciate it because I know being an Aquarius, a lot of the time people think what you're saying is strange. Even though you might turn out to be correct, generally you won't turn out to be correct until years later. By the time, you know, you said this when you were a teenager, now you got gray hair and people are like, oh yeah, I get that. But there are pros and, and cons and pretty much everything. So just do the best you can, bow to the most high, and you know, you guys have a great rest of your day. So please follow me on Amazon on my author's page. I'm putting in work for y'all. I really am. So, like I said, please follow me. It'll be much appreciated. So, you guys have a great rest of your day.